Hello, everybody, and welcome to Coffee with Kenobi's Facebook Live every Monday night at 8 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. Hello, hello, hello. I am your host, Dan Z, thrilled to be talking Star Wars with each and every one of you. Now, I know you're here, but it's not showing me that anyone's watching. What I can tell is here. Minta is here. Hello, Mary. Mary is here as well. So good to have everybody here talking Star Wars on Coffee with Kenobi's Facebook Live. It's one of my favorite things to do. Been able to share the community and conversation with all of you. So let's get into it. We're going to have a lot of fun. You can't see the video, huh? Can anyone else see the video? Everybody else having a hard time seeing things. It looks good on my end. But please let me know if you're not able to see the video for everything. Uh, let's see. We've got a good show tonight, and hopefully things will go smoothly. We're going to be talking about... Here we go. Uh, let me turn off the camera and turn it on again. Hopefully that will work. How about that? Fingers crossed that that is working. I'm getting a weird thing on my end. Where it's showing me that I have a counter at the top. There we go. Uh, should that work? Is that working? Where's R2? Yeah, where's R2-D2 when you need him? Looks in mine. It looks like it's good. So I'm. I will wait for you before I actually kick off the show and talk about all the things that are going to go on. Okay. So Amber, Minta, Ross, anybody else? Anybody else having any problems, or is it working better now? No video, huh? I tell you what. Uh, let me. You know what I'm going to do? You can hear me, right? We can just call. We can just all chat, and Dan can join us later. That's right. I'm looking forward to bringing it to each and every one of you. We're going to talk about your top five favorite things from Battle Scars, the latest episode of Star Wars, The Bad Batch. There, everybody can see me and hear me. Yes, yes. Good deal. Thanks for your patience, everybody. You got to love the loyalty and the, the friendship of everybody here in the CWK Cafe. This is so good. All right. The battle station is fully operational. Yes, thanks, everybody, for your patience. Ben is here. Mary is here, and Ben can hear me, which is good. Happy CWK, Ian. Brian can hear and see. Daniel, we are on the air and ready to roll, my friend. I know Minta's out there. There is Jason. Hello, hello. It's glitching. Now, that part, hopefully we can get that resolved, but, um, but it, we, I have a good signal on my end. So we're going to talk Battle Scars today, the latest episode of The Bad Batch. And now, let's see what's brewing in the Star Wars universe this week. All right, so I've got two big announcements. Obviously, with Coffee with Kenobi, one of the great things I've loved doing about this show throughout the history of Coffee with Kenobi for eight years is all the great travel I've done. I've gotten to go to movie premieres. I've gotten to go to Europe. I've gotten to travel to California multiple times, to theme parks, all over the place. I've got to do a lot of things to bring Star Wars to you if you're not able to make it. And one of the things I'm finally going to get to do in a couple of weeks is travel for Coffee with Kenobi. I am going to be heading to somewhere you may be very familiar with, Walt Disney World and Galaxy's Edge, on June 29th at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. You will join me as I bring you Facebook Live that week. There will be no show on the 28th, which is Monday. We're going to actually do it on the 29th, and it's going to be me live at Galaxy's Edge of Walt Disney World's Hollywood Studios, where you can tour Galaxy's Edge with me. I'm going to walk you around. We're going to enjoy the sights and the sounds of Batu together. And if you have ask questions, basically think of me as your tour guide as I walk you through 
Galaxy's Edge, I want you to feel like you are in the happiest place on Earth in one of Star Wars' newest and most spectacular planets, that too. So that is going to be fun. Yes, holy Sith Lord, that's awesome. Yes, we're going to have so much fun. Amber, I'm excited. Daniel, all good. LJ is back. LJ just got back from Galaxy's Edge, actually. LJ, I'll be picking your brain for tips for sure, buddy. Jamie, hey, everyone. Great to be live, though I guess we already were from a certain point of view. Exactly. I see what you did there. Very, very good. So that's the first one. We're going to get to Tour Galaxy's Edge. That's June 29th. Uh, it gives you a couple of weeks to rearrange your schedules if you're so you can possibly join us. That would be tremendous. But that is not all. If you are in the Orlando area that week on June 30th, we're going to have a live coffee with Kenobi meetup at Jock Lindsay's Hangar Bar at Disney Springs. It's going to be Wednesday, June 30th, from 7 o'clock to 8:30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, you can learn more on RSVP at coffeewithkenobi.com slash community. As soon as the show is done, I'm going to create an event on our Facebook page where you can RSVP there. I hope to see as many as you there as possible. Brian, cool. Brian says, can't wait. I will clear my schedule uh, for the 29th. That will be great. Matthew, you'll be there for my birthday. And LJ was just at Jocks last week. See, man, I, if only we could have worked it out so you could have been there, too. That would have been great. But this worked out the best for uh, the Coffee with Kenobi and uh, Team Zare schedule. So we're going to do that. So those are the two big announcements. Whether you're able to join us at the meetup or not, hope you can all join us on Tuesday, June 29th at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then for Facebook Live, where I'm going to take you around Galaxy's Edge. And then the next night will be the meetup at Jock Lindsay's Hangar Bar. Matthew says, hi, Dan, everyone. Hope you're having a great night. Let's go Mets. No, no, Matthew. No, it's not ruin the fun. We're going to be cheering for the Cubs. So look at that. Mary's going to be there. Count me in on Wednesday. Well, that is great news, Mary. I've actually never met you face to face. So that will be so much fun. Love it. Wow. Great. Well, I hope to see a lot of you there. I've already talked to some people who I know live in the area and they have, have expressed some interest as well. Good stuff. All right. Those are the two big announcements. Let's go ahead and jump into your top five favorite things from Battle Scars. This week's episode was really, really something else. Um, I say it every week, but now it's really true. It's my favorite episode of the entire series so far. Because we've got some major, major things going on. Let's go ahead and jump into your top five favorite moments. All right. So this one I watched a couple times like Mason and I always do. We watched it again tonight before the show just to get ready and took some notes. There's nothing more fun than taking notes with Mason. I'm writing down stuff for Coffee with Kenobi and for Facebook Live and get my top five ready. And he's getting stuff ready for his top five. I love doing that with him. So... Good stuff. All right, number five for me is the return of Rex. Of course it's going to be the return of Rex. Seeing him mysteriously show up, the way he was clothed at first, I almost thought he was going to be Obi-Wan Kenobi, although I didn't think that was possible and that didn't make sense story-wise. It was just a great, great setup, and it was just exciting to see him back. We knew we were going to see him back eventually, but it was just, that was just nice to actually see it happen. Ian's number five, Mantel Mix, seeing Wrecker and Omega enjoying it, immediately transforming me back to Batu. A great tie in the Galaxy's Edge. That's right. That's right. Isn't that so much fun? We're going to talk about that later for sure. Number five for me until Wrecker and Omega's friendship, which is great. Amber, no worries. We're going to try to do Coffee with Kenobi meetups whenever we can. This just happened to work out, but all is well. Uh, Mary, Echo and Tech's interactions, they just continue to get better and better. That's fantastic. Jason Rex, so happy to see him on screen again. He's my favorite clone trooper. Yeah, he. Uh, a lot of people are going to be very happy to see Rex back. And it doesn't look like we'll see that's the end of him either. Uh, ben, Wrecker fighting off that monster. Was that a Rathar? Pulling, putting Wrecker in harm's way makes Omega worry more about her best friend. I thought that was a Sarlacc. That's something from the Sarlacc pit. Amber's number five, the red and white popcorn from Galaxy's Edge. So fun how that all worked out. So fun. Greg's number five. Captain Rex's reflections are in Wrecker's procedure. A nice bit of silence. Yeah, that was that was a great thing too. By the way, Greg, just uh, the host of the Royal Base Card, they just celebrated their 100th episode. Congratulations to you, Greg. 
That is, wait, why am I, why am I doing that clap? This is the kind of clap that 100 episodes deserves. Where is it? Here we go. Good job, my friend. Congratulations. That is very impressive. Matthew Omega and Wrecker's Popcorn Tradition. Love it. Number five for Jamie, the soundtrack and, and sound effects really stood out for me on this one. Me too. It was great. Brian, the return of CT7567. Look at you. That's fantastic. Ben Anderson, the closed caption, said it was a Dianoga. Did it really? Well, Mason it actually said, is that a Dianoga? So when I put that up later, just ignore what I'm going to say. Interesting. All right, good job, Mason. Looks like you got that one right. And I normally check the closed captions, and I didn't, so kudos, Mary. Daniel's number five, the chip removal scene on Braca. The Jedi Cruiser in text, quote, this is no longer a sterile environment. I thought that was pretty funny as well. Let's see, number five for Mason is when Wrecker says good soldiers follow orders, and the, the drama, the tension, and the, the angst of that particular moment. And that was Mason's number five, for sure. All right, let's go ahead and jump into number four. Number four is when Wrecker is in recovery. Omega says, I won't leave him because they say, you know, why don't you get out, get some air? And she's like, no, I'm not leaving him. That's my friend. I thought was very moved by that. I thought that was great. So that is my number four. Uh, ben just checked Wikipedia. It's a Dianoga. All right. Great. I should have checked that myself. Very good. Number four for me to the return of Rex. So happy he came back. I figured you'd be really psyched about that. Amber wants to know if the Dianoga was the one from Fallen Order. That's a good question. I do not know that. Ian's number four. Laughing out loud when Sid referred to tech as goggles. Yeah, that has become her thing with him. And that's pretty funny. Number four for Jason. Wrecker giving Rex a bear hug. I watched that again today, Jason. And when when he puts him down, I feel like Rex kind of pushes away. It's sort of hard to tell. But that was uh, that was definitely very, very interesting. Uh, let's see. Mary's number four. Continual world building. Braca was great putting in the Dianoga. Yeah, that was awesome. That was so cool. Uh, let's see. Matthew, record trying to cross the chasm on the wire and almost getting eaten. That was very tense. They always give us a tense record moment, which you wouldn't think because of this big, strong guy, but it definitely happened there for sure. Uh, number four for Mason is when he, Rex first has all of his armor on and just the power and the excitement of seeing him back in business was super cool. That's Mason's number four. Excuse me. Ben's number four. Hunter reassures Omega, you're stuck with us for the long run. I hope it's a promise he can keep. He's come a long way in being her father figure. Yes, I I like that as well. I noticed that one too. Daniel, Omega and Wrecker after the job mission, eating that popcorn-like stuff. Very reminiscent of Katsaka's Kettle and Galaxy's Edge. Number four for Greg. Love revisiting Braca, the side from Fallen Order, and seeing a nice couple references for the planet in the Star Wars book. Hey, hey. Kudos on the Star Wars book. Thanks for bringing that up. Brian's number four. Hunter's trust of Rex in the bar. That was neat, wasn't it? Ian says, good pick, Mason. Yeah, good job, man. Very good. Yeah, how about that? Maybe it was from Jedi Fallen Order. I don't know. I haven't heard anything yet, but we'll keep our eyes open, of course. While it's possible... Oh, wow. Hmm. I don't know. It's possible, but there's also a lot of other variables that are put into place. But just having everything so connected like this is very exciting, I think. And I know that you all do as well. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into number three. Number three, I put Sarlacc drama. Apparently it's Dianoga drama. I can't edit it now. Beep, beep, beep. If I could, I would. But the excitement of, you know, stay, stay above the waterline and then... It had very, there were a few moments in this, especially at the end with Wrecker, where it had that old school 80s horror movie vibe. But the animation on Braca and knowing that there's that monster under the water, I'd love that. And then Wrecker being pulled in and using his knife to cut himself free. This is very powerful and intense, all the while with that whole headache thing continually out there as an issue or a threat. Very, very good storytelling. I really love that so much. Number three for Minta, Sid's nickname for tech, Goggles. <laughs> yes. Ian's number three, the visuals, specifically the lighting and haunting score in the episode were on par with the Siege of Mandalore arc in the Clone Wars. So, so good. Wow, that's high praise. Number three for Mary, Wrecker's inhibitor chip, activating the action and tension during the battle. The music during all this was amazing as always, and the silence at the beginning of the scene was 
ominous. Yeah, the the sound mix on this episode with the sound with the music, the sound effects, and sometimes when they have no sound at all, was just brilliant. Kudos to ILM for that. Number three for Matthew Rex's mystery introduction. Yeah, that was great. Number three for Amber is scrapper mystery at the end. Yeah, and they just kind of cut it off and let's notify the Empire, and then it's done. It's kind of a cliffhanger, really. Jason's number three, Wrecker in Omega's post-mission tradition and Wrecker. So casually charging everything to Sid's tab. That was funny. That was very funny. That reminded me of an old, of an old Chevy Chase movie, Fletch. Greg, Omega knowing that Rex was a general and clone so much to her that we still have to learn. And, and the way she kind of deciphers it too was great. We were hoping it was a Rattar in the water. We, we debated Rattar. We debated Dianoga. And then I just thought it looked like a Sarlacc by the, the mouth and stuff. So hard to say. But anything from the original trilogy is great to me. So, very cool. Number three for Ben. While Wrecker was locked on Omega with his blaster, you can tell he's fighting the inhibitor chip as much as he can. Such a subtle thing, but I greatly appreciate that touch. And Ben, I don't know about you, or any of you, but I, I'm really noticing and loving the power of the expression in the animation. I think that is just really cool that they're able to do that. I mean, of course, in animation, that's kind of a, a standard but just seeing it through this style of animation and the fact that it is telling the story whether the voice is doing whatever it's doing or not i think is really really neat daniel's number three the amphibious sarlacc scene you just knew a record was not going down like that amber says sarlaccs have more of a beak true and we didn't really get to see very much but that is a good point that is a very good point all right number three for mason is the order 66 music when when echo or when Wrecker chokes Tech, and they play that that intense keyboard synthesizer music through order, the Order 66 music, as we're describing it, was very, very powerful. That was Mason's number three. All right, let's go ahead and jump into number two. Number two, Mantel Mix. When I saw that popcorn that they were eating, that Omega and Wrecker were eating, I thought, well, that's from Galaxy's Edge. Katsaka's kettle is in the marketplace at the end. You can get a big thing of it in a mouse droid, or you can get a smaller bag. It has a sour kind and a spicy kind, and it's amazing. It's so, so, so good. I can't wait to have some in a couple of weeks. Last time I was there, they weren't, they didn't have any ready, which I thought was a little surprising. So hopefully there will be a lot there this time because we need to try some. We need to celebrate it. But just seeing that tie in the Galaxy's Edge, I'm always going to be a sucker for that. You all know how much I love Galaxy's Edge. Hopefully you're going to join me there live in a couple of weeks. But that is fantastic stuff. So we are excited that they're seeing that cross-pollination of the theme parks and them actually eating it together like that, which is great. Which is great. Okay. Uh, the animation is leaps and bounds. But it's, it's grown a lot, hasn't it, over the years? Meet is number two. The ship graveyard on Brock it reminded me of Jakku in a way. I could see that with the, all of the crashed starships and the atmosphere there for sure. Matthew and Wrecker loses it to the chip. Very frightening, but very powerful. There were two for Mary, just one word. Rex. Absolutely. Ian's number three. Hinting, seeing the hint of a smile that Rex gives, listening to Hunter describe the Batch's relationship to Omega. I liked it too. It was a very subtle touch, but it was cool. Brian's number two, Omega doing a silent face-to-face -face analysis to quickly and easily figure he's a Gen 1 clone. I love when I, whenever Omega, like, Omega's almost like an empath because she's able to dial into people and you know she's so empathetic, but she's able to just sort of calm people down, I think, and I really like that. Number two for Jason, a huge sense of relief that the batches and inhibitor chips are removed. This gives me hope for Crosshair. He's going to be a tough one. I don't know how they're going to do that, but that will be good stuff. Number two for Greg. We're hammerhead and cannon. Can't get enough of the Kenner nods. I know. Isn't that wonderful seeing that? I thought that too, Greg. Number two for Amber is the return of Rex. And definitely. A lot of people love that. I know a lot of people wrote about that in the CWK Cafe. And if you're not sure, every Friday I post, hey, give your spoiler-free reactions to the new episode. And then on Sunday, I say, okay, it's been 48 hours. Give your full review of the latest episode of the bad batch so in the cwk cafe which is our exclusive facebook group that is where you can instantly go ahead and put in there what it is that 
you want to talk about of course in relation to the latest show or review or whatever but the cwk cafe is our exclusive weekly facebook group you can instantly give your reactions there okay what other results do people have number two for ben in general, the theme of Omega and Wrecker's relationship has built, been built over many episodes and really became the focal point of the episode. It made Wrecker's turn hurt that much more. Also, I agree with you on the animation. Yeah, that's great. So great. Now, after I go on Rise, i got to get some popcorn. You do. Some of the best food in Galaxy's Edge, honestly. Blake, what's up, man? Hey, man, we were just talking We were just talking about what's going on in Orlando, so stay tuned. we got some news for you, buddy. Daniel said in her remarks, mutually beneficial conversation. Ironic, she called the lizard ugly. She seems like a lizard. I'm not running a clone club, clubhouse. Yeah, there was a lot of irony there with Sid. Battle scars, man. Exactly. There's a lot of battle scars. And as I was explaining to Mason earlier tonight, I'm so excited. I'm talking fast. And my brain is not catching up with my mouth as I'm telling you all these fun things. How about that? But internally, there are a lot of battle scars, and of course, physically, there are ones after removing the inhibitor chip and just the scars of war themselves. A very apt title. Speaking of Mason, number two for him uh, when, is when Omega says, I'm staying until he wakes up, which was my number four. That moved Mason so much that it was his number two. Let's go ahead and jump into our top one. Top one, top your favorite moment from this episode battle scars one for me is tradition it ties into number two but this is after omega and wrecker wrecker tries to make up with her he didn't he can't help what happened he was he was controlled because of the inhibitor chip but he still feels bad about it and what does he do or what does she do she says the mission's over she pulls out the mantel mix and they share popcorn together and that's the number one i mean there's no hug there's no i'm sorry it's understood because of their friendship and their connection, that it's evolved past the basic signs. And I'm just going to share this food with you, and we're good. We're good, Wrecker. No problem. I love that. I thought that was just beautiful. So the tradition and how they make up was number one for me. Number one for Mary Omega not leaving Wrecker's side while he's recovering, him reaching out to her as soon as he wakes up. Their relationship is so special. It really is wonderful. Number one, for me to Wrecker's chip, I was on the edge of my seat when he went into Berserker mode, but I was relieved that the chip was removed and he was remorseful of his actions. Number one, for Ian Rex, of course, I literally yelled, Rex, it's Rex, as soon as I saw the, the signature blue and white on his arm. So great to see more of one of my favorite characters in all of Star Wars. And Ian, I knew you were fired up just from knowing you over the years and what you put in the CWK Cafe. So that's so cool. Number one, for Matthew. When Rex discovers the Bad Batch still have their chips, the tension as Rex reaches for his blaster and the fear that it crosses his face, the camera angles were amazing. This episode was so good. It was great storytelling all across the spectrum. Number one for Blake, Omega not leaving Wrecker's side during his surgery. Even though he, he just went crazy on everyone, Star Wars is mainly about beautiful character moments. There's no a better example than that one. I agree. Jason, the depth of Omega and Wrecker's love for one another is so moving. Really great stuff. Number one for Amber, the chip removal and the sense of freedom. It was almost, I won't say it was easy, but you just know it's not going to be that easy with Crosshair. You just know. Number one for Ben, the Mantel mixed tradition. Ah, yeah, I put it on Sid's tab. I love the record loves traditions. And since he can't leave a mark on the wall in his barricades after every mission, he made a new one with Omega. Great storytelling. Oh, good call on the, the wall in his barracks. That's a great call, Ben. I love that. Number one for Greg, Wrecker and Omega's relationship. So well done. Great payoff over the last past episodes. Definitely, definitely. Excuse me. Daniel Rex in his return. Loved the robes that Charlie was initially wearing. And then to see him in all of his gear on Braca was very nice. It was so cool, wasn't it? Brian, the return of CT7567. My middle son knew it was Rex in the bar when he mm -hmm. saw his eyes. We paused and discussed before we saw the full reveal. That's great. By the way, Mason, Anthony Rizzo, and Patrick Wisdom both just hit home runs. So I just wanted you to know that. Woohoo! Go Cubs! Come on, let's get fight back here. All right, so speaking of Mason, his number one is, I know, Wrecker, it's okay. Similar to what I said for number one, but my emphasis is more on the food. His is more on 
how they make up. Because Omega just knows. They have a connection. They have a bond. And it's really, really nice. Their relationship, who knew how endearing and charming it would be after all of this time. So that's good stuff. That is very good stuff. All right, so what are we going to talk about next week? How about the Bad Batch, shall we, everybody? Next week's top five is going to be top five moments from episode eight of the Bad Batch, naturally. So that's going to be what we've been doing. Of course, we look at them on Coffee with Kenobi. And we look at them in detail on the actual podcast itself, where I have two other hosts with me. And then we do it immediately live here every Monday night at 8 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. So that is great because all of you get to be involved. And I love so much that those of you who are listening now, whether it's on Instagram or on our YouTube channel or here on Facebook later after the show is aired live, if you're not here with us right away, I know that you're listening on the podcast. I see the numbers and I hear your feedback and I'm so grateful. I'm glad this is part of your tradition of breaking down these episodes as well. And that's what this community is all about to me. You having a voice and us having a conversation together. And I love it. Let's go ahead and jump into Ask DMZ. All right, so now that we're here in SDNZ, uh, Ian says, who could have foreseen we'd know how much we've come to love records so quickly? Isn't it amazing? Uh, Minta wants to know what are my first thoughts on the first episode of Loki. Well, Minta, how interesting that you say that. This week on CWK Pourover was all about the Loki series premiere. It was myself, Tom Gross, and Corey Club. We spent about 30 to 40 minutes on it so if you are interested and you want to become a member of the cwk cafe for just five bucks a month you get access to a weekly exclusive podcast where we talk about star wars pop culture behind the scenes of coffee with kenobi lots of fun top five lists and all of that great stuff so we go into it in great detail but meantime i will definitely tell you that i loved it amber wants to know the same thing did you like loki i love loki i i couldn't rate it any higher to be honest with you I think it was the A-plus of the A-pluses. I thought it was smart. I thought it was insightful. The acting was great, and I absolutely loved it. Ben, what's how many times have been to Galaxy's Edge? I've been to Galaxy's Edge. Let's see. I went to the media preview, premiere, and grand opening in California. And then I went, and I was there like, gosh, I actually walked through the gates three times, but I spent hours there. I had a whole section of the park to myself. Then I went back for the D23 Expo. Then I went to the Rise of Resistance opening in Florida. And then I went back again with my family. So I've been total four times. So I've been in and out of that park uh, a lot more than that. I love Galaxy's Edge. It's, it's one of my favorite places anywhere. And that's why I'm excited that I'm going to bring you there in a couple of weeks. It's going to be so fun. Uh, Mr. Minutes or Mr. DNA? Mm, interesting question. I'm going to say... I'm going to say DNA, I think. What about you, Ian? Jason, if you're a clone like the Bad Batch, what would your enhanced ability be? Oh, gosh. I don't know. Maybe um, how about being an educator or how about super charisma? How about that? <laughs> I don't know. That's a good question. That's a good question. I like to fly. That'd be fun. But I don't know if that's an option. I don't know. Have I inter interviewed Mike Quinn? I have not, but I would certainly love to. We have Celebration of Anaheim shirts. I know I have the one you're wearing now, and it's my go-to chill shirt at home. CWK is on me most this week. Yes, the CWK Celebration ones will definitely be on. Corey is going to make one for Anaheim undoubtedly. I'll be sure to remind him, but we, we've made one for everyone since we started, and we're definitely not going to slow down. My favorite Star Wars movie, Amber, is The Empire Strikes Back, although I certainly love A New Hope and The Last Jedi. And that reminds me, in the CWK uh, Alliance, if you remember the Alliance, there's an episode where we go through and rank all the Star Wars movies from from 1 to 11, and it was fun. Uh, Ian, great point, Blake. Looking forward to rocking some CWK word celebration. That would be awesome. Oh, Amber, that's your favorite one, too. Bravo. Well, um, speaking of what we talked about at the top of the show, I know that Blake is here, and I wanted to be sure to let him know, but on Tuesday, June 29th at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern, I will be on site at Disney's Hollywood Studios at Walt Disney World in Orlando, Florida. You can tour Galaxy's Edge with me live on Facebook, experience the sights and sounds of Batuu, 
and of course your comments and questions. I'm going to take you around Galaxy's Edge, and we're just going. To, I'm literally going to walk through as much of it as I can and point out things for you. Um, and there'll be some other fun announcements that night as well. Ben wants to know with Ralph McQuarrie's passing birthday just passing. Do you have a favorite painting? That's hard to say. I'm I'm pretty partial to the ones from. The Empire Strikes Back, of course. I don't know why I say of course. I just remember seeing those a lot when I was a kid. But you really can't go wrong with Rob McCoy. Maybe that would be fun to do a top five as well for that one. So the other major announcement, and Blake, I know I kind of gave you a heads up a little bit ago, but we got an official now. Again, Wednesday, June 30th from 7 o'clock to 8.30 p.m. Eastern at Jock Lindsay's Hangar Bar is the Coffee with Kenobi Meetup right there. Come hang out with me. A couple of people here in the cafe have already said they're going to be here be at it so that is wonderful it's going to be wednesday june 30th from 7 to 8 o'clock 8 30 p.m eastern time again at jock Lindsay's hangar bar as soon as this is over i'm going to set up the actual event on our in our facebook group the cwk cafe so i'm very much looking forward to that speaking of the cwk cafe here is the link again or here is the actual logo itself it's our exclusive facebook group go to www.coffeewithcomedy.com slash community and there you have it. Okay. Well, I think that's going to do it for this week's show. Kind of a quick one. It was a lot to uh, get ready for tonight, but it was worth it because I got to spend it with each and every one of you. Next week, of course, uh, we'll be joining you Monday to talk about your top five favorite moments from episode eight of Star Wars The Bad Batch. Blake is still not 100% sure, but, but he's pretty sure he can make it. Blake, hopefully you can, buddy. would love to hang out with you for sure. I uh, wish you were there in August when I'm going to be there. I wish I was too, man. I wish I could be there pretty regularly, but it is pretty far away. Um, but I will get there as much as I can to try to bring you as much coffee with Kenobi and Star Wars community as I can. I love being a part of this group. If there are leaked photos from Kenobi, well, Daniel, I haven't looked at them because, as you know, I, I do not do the spoiler thingy, so I have not taken a peek. But I'm sure they're wonderful, and I'm sure that... Once there's cosplay opportunities, you're going to make them. They're going to be amazing. LJ, have a great week. Glad you had fun in Disney World. Minta, may the force be with you. Ian, have a great Star Wars filled week as well. Good luck on pre-orders for action figures and things. Ben, great to see you. Mary, have a great week. Happy Father's Day. Yes, happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there, past, present, and future. Uh, thanks for another great show. I really need it tonight, Jason. Happy to do it. Happy to do it. Uh, due to a meetup in Virginia, and I'll be there. Well, I don't know if I'll be in Virginia for a while, but we're always open for opportunities to do that. Brian, can't wait to see the tour. I was only there for a few hours in 2019. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, it's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to doing it. Matthew, have a magical week for you as well. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day again to everybody. Thank you, as always, for joining me every Monday night at 8 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. I will see you next week. Be sure to listen to the podcast this week as we go into more detail of Battle Scars as well as other Star Wars community conversation and fun. Have a good one, everybody. Until next time, may the Force be with you. This is a podcast you're looking for. <laughs>